Oh. Kyle, what are you doing? I'm creating a wave. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News today. I'm Trace. One of the biggest swells ever recorded in the Pacific just went down. We're talking massive waves. So we brought in big wave surfer and YouTuber Kyle Tierman to help break down exactly what's creating these giant things. Kyle, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Waves like we're seeing now actually come from the other side of the world. Ocean waves are a lot like sound waves. They start from a single point of origin and over time they disperse. Water is a great conductor of energy and sound actually moves faster through water than it does through air. And so energy in ocean waves can travel really far. Most of the big wintertime swells, like the one California is getting right now, form near the Aleutian Islands. There's a lot of wind blowing across the water over there, and that's creating storms, which in turn then creates waves. And cold air from Siberia can add to the storm's overall energy and push these waves towards California. When all of this storm and wave energy combine, it can result in some massive waves. Open ocean swells are similar to sound waves. They're measured in amplitude, which is the vertical distance from the highest point, the peak, to the lowest point, the trough of each wave, and the period. That's the time between the peak of one wave to the peak of the next wave. The period can tell you a lot about how far the wave has traveled, which is a good rough measure of how much energy that wave has. Longer periods, like those over 15 seconds, that wave came from really far away, while shorter periods, like less than eight seconds, those come from nearer the shore. So if you're standing on a pier, you can pull out your phone and use it as a stopwatch and the time measured between the peak of one wave and the peak of the next wave is going to tell you the swell's period. So a swell with a 15 to 18 second period could have formed from a storm that originated on the other side of the world. It's had a lot of time to clean itself up and get to you. So if bigger periods contain so much more energy, the wave is going to be larger. But there's another thing to consider. The contours of the ocean floor can affect the size of the wave too. That's called bathymetry. OK, so picture a swell oscillating up and down, up and down through the open ocean. And then suddenly, bam, the bathymetry changes. The bottom of a wave hits a reef or a sandbar offshore, and now the energy has nowhere to go but up. This is what makes the waves that you would see standing on the beach. In a place with a sheer undersea coast like California, the bathymetry causes that energy to surge upward all at once, taking all of that water with it and forming some pretty large waves. On the east coast, though, there's a continental shelf, so it's a lot more shallow and it doesn't make as big a waves. How large depends on all of these factors. The storms off in the ocean, the amplitude, the period, and of course then surfers take all of that information and they put it together for their craft. So if I were to tell you that a swell just hit Hawaii that was 10 feet at 10 seconds, that storm probably formed pretty close to shore because the energy hasn't had time to travel very far and organize itself. These are the kinds of waves that make you seasick on a boat. They're not great for surfing. It's jumbly. It's disorganized. But if a swell has an eight feet amplitude and it's every 20 seconds in its period, that's going to produce big, powerful, organized waves that you're going to like surfing. That longer period means it's taking longer to get through the whole wave. That means it's probably huge. Two of the biggest waves in the world, Nazare, Portugal, and Porto Escondido, Mexico, have strikingly similar bathymetry. These spots can produce waves that are larger than 60 feet. The swells come out of deep water, so there's nothing to obstruct the energy. Then the energy gets funneled into a canyon, which allows the waves to refract off of each other and produce a wave that's better shaped and really fun to ride, or frightening, depending on no, how big it is. Depending. The waves that you are seeing, or you're surfing if you're cool like Kyle, they look beautiful, but the science and the physics behind them, it's supremely complicated. If you want to know more about surfing and get to see Kyle get out onto some of these mathematical marbles, make sure you check out his channel. You can find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Kyle Tierman, or on Twitter, I'm Kyle underscore T-Man, and look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for coming in, Kyle. It was super awesome. Thanks for having me. Have you guys ever tried surfing? What's the biggest wave that you've ever seen? Tell us down in the comments. You can also tweet us your surfing and wave pictures. Those are always fun. You can find me on Twitter as well. I'm at Trace Dominguez.